Okay, relativity will now come with two different panels. So we have the full panel here, and then I created a relativity mini version just because I know this is a lot of space to take up in your After Effects UI. Now for me, I don't have enough space to keep something like this docked all the time. So I wanted something a little bit smaller, and I am a K-Bar user as well. So we've gone ahead and added K-Bar support for relativity mini. So let's take a look at how Relativity Mini is a little bit different and also some new features that have been added to both panels. So let's just jump in here. I'm gonna start with this box. Let's just duplicate it. So obviously anything that I could map to a single click button, I have. So we have duplicate here and just as always before, we can type in how many layers we want duplicated. I'll just go across the bottom here because these are pretty similar while well, they're exactly the same as before. So we can select our work area keyframes. We can create linear spatial paths and then we can normalize scale on these guys. And just like before, we can select our layers, whatever our first layer is selected, it's gonna show our size here and then we can make modifications there. So nothing really new there. And then this last icon is to bake our controllers if we create controllers for our grids or our radial arrays. So let's jump across this top row now that we have some layers. And let me go ahead and move this first one so we can actually see a change. And this first one, as we can see, it's a relative grid or alt for oblique. So I'll just go ahead and click it. And since we don't have a slider here, it's gonna ask how many layers per row you want. Let's say that I want three. And we can go ahead and make that modification. Now, as you can see, we can still create a controller. There's just a checkbox for that. So that option is still there. Now you can also do oblique grids here. So if I set my first and last layer, and like it says here, if I hover, it says alt. And so you'll know that the alternative version is showing because these all have blue within the icons. And so I can go and click that with holding alt. I'm gonna say three again. And now we have our other grid type. We can also obviously do radial arrays. So here we have a relative radial and then alt for oblique. So I'll go ahead and do a, a regular radial array. And you can see that we have a lot of the same options that were in the full panel, but now you have to manually type it in. So obviously if you need to adjust these a lot, the full panel is gonna be uh, more convenient. So we can go ahead and say, okay. And again, we have the same option. We have the same option to do oblique. So I'm gonna hold down Alt and click, and we'll say, okay. So we have that option. So let's take a look at rows. Rows have changed a little bit in both panels and I'll show you the, how it looks in the full panel here in a moment. So let me just bring this layer down and I'm gonna actually um, delete, let me just delete um, some of these layers. And so with layer one here, oh, let's go ahead. That's not layer one, that's layer one. Let's go ahead and click on the button to create a row. So this is auto row. And the nice thing about this now is if we hover over here, we can see that control will align all the layers to the top of the first selected layer and alt will align all the layers to the bottom of the first selected layer. So in this particular case, it doesn't really make too much of a difference because they're all the same size. So let me just come in here and change these a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and select all of our layers. I'm gonna hold down control and you can see that that top line is blue. And so now all the layers are aligned according to the top of our first selected layer. And then if I hold down Alt, the bottom will be aligned. So that's pretty nice. I like that option because by default, just be aware that by default, it aligns them by the anchor point. So if I don't hold any modifiers, it just lines them up according to the anchor point. And then we get that even spacing on our layers. So let me go ahead and delete a couple more. Well, let me just delete these really tall ones here and let's take a look at column. So same thing with column, we've added more options here. So the standard option is again by anchor point. 
Now if, I, now if I hover over here, let's just take a look. Control will align to the left and Alt will align to the right. So let me just hold down Control and click. And then if I hold down Alt, they'll be aligned along the right edge. We obviously still have the oblique diagonal and the standard mode is HV. So it's gonna look at horizontal and vertical. And then if we look at the help here, Control is just for the H mode and the Alt is for the V mode. And in the full version of Relativity, if I go over to Matrix and we take a look at the Auto Row option, we have a drop down where you can change between the anchor point, the top or bottom. And then obviously if we go to Auto Column, we have left and right. And then the options for Oblique Diagonal are still there, but they're now in this drop down, just trying to get everything into this UI. Okay, if you don't want to use the full version of Relativity or Relativity Mini, you can make your own custom layout using K-Bar. So let's take a look at how we do that. So let's go into K-Bar settings, and I'm just going to create a new group here under Relativity. Now, obviously, you can mix these in with the panel that you already have. I'll just start fresh here. I'm going to add a button, and when I do that, I need to come down to Run JSX. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm in my script UI panels. That's where your relativity script should be located, both of them. So let's just scroll down here and we can see that we have relativity and relativity mini. You want to make sure you click on relativity mini because the full version of relativity does not have K-Bar support. So with relativity mini selected, let's go ahead and click on open. So within K-Bar, in order to run specific functions, all we have to do is change the argument here. And so all the arguments that are supported are listed right here and this file will be included in the download i think they're pretty self-explanatory as far as what they do so let's say that we want this button to create a relative grid so i'm just going to copy this to make sure we get it correct and i'm just going to paste it in here and then for the description i'm just going to type in uh, relative grid so that when we hover over the button within k-bar we can see what it is and then we can change the icon as well now you can use your own icons or you can use the icons that I've included in the download. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch this to PNG slash SVG, and I'm gonna to navigate to the folder with all the icons. So I'm just gonna click on relative grid and click on open, and then say okay. And this all looks good, we can say okay. And so now we have our button. Now let's go ahead and just duplicate this. So if we come over here to the pencil icon, we can see that to clone is just shift and drag. So I'm just gonna hold down shift and drag. And for some reason, I have a hard time getting it to work when I only have one button. So let's just go ahead and click on clone. Now for this one, let's go ahead and edit this. And all we have to do now is change our argument here. So let's go ahead and change it to do something else. Let's say that we want that to be the oblique grid. So all I'm gonna do is copy the argument. We'll paste it in here and we'll change the name. We'll go over to icon. I'm gonna click on browse and let's go ahead and find the icon for oblique grid. Click on open. We'll say, okay, okay. Now, obviously you can create your own keyboard modifiers here. So let's just go and throw this in here if I want that to be alt. And if we come over here, we can see that that is working just like the one I had. And obviously you don't have to stack them like I do. You can put them in any order that you want. So now all you have to do is go through and just keep duplicating these. So that was a shift and drag. And obviously you can drag them outside of that one as well. And you can keep modifying these and making them whatever buttons you want. You can custom tailor it. Maybe there's only a few functions that you actually use all the time that you want to have in your K-Bar. So hopefully that gives you some flexibility and makes it something that is a little bit easier to work into your daily workflow.